Hey, what's happening, everybody? Oh, here it is. What is happening? Oh my gosh. Was that your end, Joy? Um, I feel like it was your end. Huh. All right, cool. I think it's all gone. Sorry, everybody. Hey, it's Thursday night. Welcome to Thrifty Business. I don't know what alien demons those were, but that was crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, my wife just texted me, WTF. I don't know what that was. All right, but but they're here. Hello. <laughs> hey, it's time for another episode of Thrifty Business. And tonight I got a special super duper co-host. You know her, you love her. One of your admins. One of your lifeguards. Jeans with Joy herself. Joy Williams. Hi, Joy. Hi, Jason. Hey, everybody. What's going on? You know, just uh, happy to be here. Happy that you guys waited the extra hour for me. Uh, we would wait for you any anytime. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, lots of echoing. All right. Whoop, me. Let me try and turn my volume down a little. Maybe that now I, uh, Well, I don't know where my headset went. It was right here. Sorry. Like we were having a good old chat before. There was no demons. <laughs> All right. Hey, Stace, run over here and see if you can find my headset while I'm hosting the show. Thanks. Okay. All right. So while we're working on that, let's get to our guest, shall we? Oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, no. I was the right one. Oh, jeez. I'm all, I'm, all, I'm all a mess now. The demons got to me. All right. Yes, Stacy. Seriously. All right, now it's time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different mug, and I try and match up to our guest. Our guest tonight is Jacqueline Luciano, or Luciano, depending on who's saying it. I'm Italian. Hey, Jacqueline, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I am great. All right, so uh, Jacqueline lives in Oregon, so I decided to go with uh, one of the tiki mugs from Holly Paley, one of the greatest tiki bars in the country, which is located in Portland. And I wanted to show this one because this is kind of their normal mug, but they've released it in four or five different glazes right now. And so when you find these modern mugs that uh, have different glazes, when you go to list them and sell them, make sure you compare apples to apples. Don't just look at them as a whole. You want to look at them as, oh, this is the one with the green tint because some glazes will sell for more. So always make sure you double check that. Now, when we get to talk to Jacqueline, she's been all over the world. She's lived in Africa and India. So for this week, I decided to do, since she's a traveler, my traveler's five-year mug. Nice. And there are two ages of her kids, add up to five. See, ta-da! Well done. <laughs> so what are you drinking tonight, Joy? I am drinking the standard vodka and cranberry out of the Denison mug, Denison glass. I keep calling it a mug. It is a Denison glass, which has the logo of Jason's home bar on it. And I want you to know, I actually was going to surprise you tonight because there was a tiki mug on eBay that had the word Levi on it. Some random like company that's name started Levi. And I was like, oh, that is, I need that. But the mug itself was stupid cheap, but they wanted $15.50 shipping for the mug. And I was like, pass. That's a hard fail. Yeah. And uh, you, you joining us this evening, Jacqueline? Mm -hmm. I have a little IPA. My uh oh. Oh, wait. Hold on. Somehow I turned you all the way down. Okay. Let's, tr let's try again. <laughs> I'm just drinking an IPA in an Oregon glass. All right, I like it. I like it. Well, cheers. Thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's say goodbye, Jacqueline. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. We'll see you in a little bit. And let's get right to our next segment, shall we? Let's do it. Come on, there we go. All right, it's time for our scores of the week. Joy and I will show you the cool stuff we sold. These are bolos. Be on the lookout. Things that you should be hunting for. You're up first, Joy. I'm up first. <clears throat> oh, I have to switch the screen. Sorry. Okay, so this um, was actually something that I got the day of that um, Buffalo Exchange dollar sale. It's a Patagonia Merino Wool Blend Flannel Shirt. The only issue with it was, well, it's not even an issue, obviously, is that it's an extra small. But it, you know, was only listed for maybe a week or so. Um, I listed it 
higher than the comps um, and then it was on sale for 20% off and it did sell for the comp price for that size of $29.59 plus shipping. Nice. Oops. 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 Ooh, Diane von Furstenberg. Woo! Diane von Furstenberg, the DVF. So I bought this dress at Savers and I paid around $11 for it. Um, because Diane von Furstenberg is worth $11. It did have a couple of minor flaws that I noted and took pictures of. It had some like poles in it, which is, you know, anytime you wear a silk dress, you're going to end up with poles in it. So I ended up taking, um, oh, it was on sale. I paid 11 and I sold it for $52.49 plus shipping. Pretty and it was up less than a month. It was super cute. If it had fit me, I would probably would have kept it. Okay, so this brand, this Ibex, is a brand that's made in the USA. It was sold at JCPenney. Um, I bought this in the 99 cent section. This is not a shirt that you would think, ooh, I bet that brings money. But I took an offer on it in three days after listing for $35.99 plus shipping. Nice. I love that brand. Oh, yay. Not a DVD, but close. And so this was, um, I was doing my CD homework back in February at Savers and it was in, just like Jason tells you, um, it was in the CD section. It was new. It's a PC game, um, Harry Potter, and I paid $1.99 for it and I sold it for $25.59. I did do free shipping, but it was like four ounces. Cost me less than yeah, $4. Pretty much they're all four ounces. Yeah. My scores this week. All right. So mine kept changing, and uh, but this one didn't because the universe smiled upon me. Have enjoy, co-host. And we're going to talk about jeans with Jacqueline. And I sold this awesome pair of 501s that someone tricked out themselves. So here is their, their handiwork. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. And so that's the front. And there's the back. And I got these at uh, Buffalo Exchange for $16. And as you can see, it's all for one hundred dollars. Woo! I love it that you sold them for one hundred dollars plus shipping. Yep. Yep. And they were tiny, twenty-eight waist, thirty inseam. So it's a skinny bean pole right there. So I was excited mm -hmm. to get that hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, this one I sold so fast. You know, we've all had that. It sells so fast that I price it too cheap. I was running a sale. But uh, if you don't know what Fleetwood's on front is, Mick Fleetwood, the drummer of Fleetwood Mac, has a bar a three-story bar restaurant in Lahaina uh, in Maui. And you can often just find find him playing drums with local bands up on the top deck, just hanging out. So you can just walk up and talk to, to Mick Fleetwood. And uh, so I put it up and it sold like in less than a day. So I'm like, oops, but oh well. I paid uh, three bucks and I sold for $23.69 plus shipping. Love it. Okay, Michelle in the chat said she just sold her first San Marcos. And look at this. I sold one, shipped it out today, $100. And this time uh, I tried it by taking the pictures on the bed in my guest room and just having a little stepladder. Uh, my lovely wife had helped me by throwing them on, flipping them over, taking them off. And it looks pretty good. And this is a big badass uh, 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 throw. And I did put the weight in the title because this, sucking, this sucker weighs seven pounds by itself. Yeah. So when you're selling this, you want the buyers to know this is a heavy duty blanket. So before even throwing a box, it's a seven pound blanket. So I got hundred bucks for that today. And if you watch my haul from a, a last haul or the haul before, I taught you all about Tom of Finland. I picked up this sweatshirt. The only bummer was uh, uh, it was a size small. That was the only bummer because Tom of Finland, although it aims to all gay men, it, it's definitely more towards the bear crowd and the bear crowd's the bigger gay men. So imagine if I was actually gay that I'd be a bear. Uh, so, you know, had this been a double X or triple X, it probably kind of got more, but it was only listed for a couple of weeks and it sold for $70. And I think I paid 10 or 11 bucks for it. So uh, no one had this sweatshirt up anywhere, but again, it was small. So I wanted to make sure that I moved it. I had a buyer. We haggled a little bit and we settled on 70. Plus shipping. I'm going to keep saying that. Plus shipping. All right. Not only do I sell blankets and clothing. I sell CDs too. I know it's a shocker, but time for my CD scores of the week. All right. So, uh, yeah, uh, Elvira always does well. And, but this is a Halloween basically CD. It sold this week for 29 bucks. 
So always keep listing your holiday stuff. I paid $4 for that CD. And not just about CDs anymore. It's also about cassettes because coming up in the near, near future, I'll be having a cassette webinar. I sold this level 42, which is a band from the 80s that had one hit for $16 plus. What, Joey? Shipping. And I wanted to profile this one. You might not find Don Tiki. This is definitely Tiki Bar music. You might not find it as readily as available as some other things, but I bought it new at a record store for $8. And so that's why I wanted to point that out. E even record stores, new stuff can be sold at a much highly inflated price online. Paid eight bucks, sold it for $39.40 plus. Shipping. <laughs> yeah, you got it. All right. Now, if you've not taken my webinar, head on over to www.flippincds.com. It's a two and a half hour webinar of so much intense information. You need to watch it twice. First time, just watch it and uh, absorb. Second time, take your notes because if you start to take notes the first time, you will get lost. Okay, but each week I do give away one. So if you have not taken it and you're not in the secret beach, feel free to uh, guess. But if you're in the secret beach or if you're taking it, please don't guess. Let someone win who hasn't seen it yet. All right. We had a hard time wording this question, but I think this is the best way to do it. These three bands are made up of the same members. What or who is the third band? So the first band is the network. The second band is the Foxborough Hot Tubs. And who is the third band? Now, of course, the third band is the famous band. So these are their side projects. So if you don't know, let's see who can Google the fastest. <laughs> I did give a clue today. And if you saw my Facebook Live in the thrifting board and you Googled my clue, it, it might have helped you figure it out. Boom, Michael Clifford got it. Yes, Green Day. So the network is their uh, secretive new wave band. They're all under assumed names and they wear masks. Foxborough Hot Tubs is their garage rock band. And my clue today was Rudy Can't Fail. Well, Green Day owns a restaurant called Rudy's Can't Fail Cafe up in Oakland. So, uh, Michael Clifford, congratulations. You won. Send me over uh, a message on Facebook, and I will get you all set up for the webinar. For the rest of you, head over to flippingcds.com. When you get to the checkout point, there is a uh, code to get half off the webinar. And uh, I'm going to teach you how to thrift in record stores and thrift stores because they're two totally different frames of mind. But guess what, Joy? Not everything can be winners. Now it's time for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. Oh, my gosh. All right. So this dud is... Um, an example of one, you know, one half is not the same as, you know, a whole because this hair product is discontinued and it does sell um, for good money. And when I bought this for like a dollar at Salvation Army um, back in Chicago, two had just sold for $60. So one would think that one would sell for $30. No, it's been listed for like two years. <laughs> And it's going nowhere, and it was discontinued long before I listed it, which is fine most of the time with hair color. Um, and I just ended it the other day. I thought, it's it's too expired now. And I realized that's not a lot of hair color. So two boxes may be worth $60, but most women aren't going to be able to color their hair with just one box. So I think that's why it never sold. Oh, my God. So... So in the Chicago market, you can stack your discounts at Goodwill. You can stack a birthday discount with a bounce back coupon and those kinds of things. So I bought a bunch of Liz Lang maternity dress, these um, sleeveless tank dresses, and I only paid like $1.42 for them. And they had been selling for around $18. And I thought I was so cool because I got eight of them for like $1.42. Um, it's been two years and I have sold two of them. And one of them was just the other day. <laughs> brain wreck if you're an extra small and you're having a baby hit me up because i'm done with these dresses <laughs> all right 
Joey's done with these dresses, and I want to show you, no matter how good you are, and I am the best at flipping CDs, I've been doing it for 19 years, I still make mistakes. I paid five bucks for the CD, and look, it sold for six twenty-five. dollars So not, uh, not a good return on my money nor time, but wait, it gets worse. <laughs> so my assistant pulled this to ship, and she goes, is the price right on the outside? I go, yeah. She goes, you paid 15 for the CD, and you sold it for $5.98. Yeah, so here's what happens. When you buy a CD, sometimes I have so many that there's always like a stack of them waiting to get listed. Sometimes by the time I get to it, it it crested and came down. It's kind of like stocks and bonds. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. So just to show you, it happens to the best of us too. So if you do buy a CD or a dress or hair color that doesn't work out, you're not alone. We all have our duds of the week. So don't worry about it yeah. if you have a dud. <laughs> Now it's time for where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential customers. Where? Okay, Joy, you got to pronounce this. That's part of the segment. Um, I believe it is Zongshan. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I sold a CD. I sold a, uh, what did I sell? Tchaikovsky something to, um, it was a double CD that was, um, that went to China. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that in another segment. Um, so this, this past week I decided to switch back from GSP, which I've been using for about a year for various reasons to shipping on my own. And, um, I didn't double check the weight of that double CD before it sold to China. <laughs> so I ate about eight bucks in shipping. Hey, see, no matter how good you are, sometimes you have little mistakes. All right, no now Joy's went, Joy's went to China, and mine was pretty close too. And it was a CD also. Mine went to Seoul, South Korea, and it was the soundtrack to the Casualties of War starring Michael J. Fox and Sean Penn. So just as you can see, CDs, music is worldwide. If nothing else, music, yeah. music and denim is worldwide. All right, time for. <laughs> you have got to be shipping me. Little tips and tricks, what to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. Oh, there we go. All right. So let me just tell you that CD has been the bane of my existence because not only did I eat $8 in shipping, even though you hear us tell you all the time to keep your supplies stocked up, most of what I sell is clothing now. And so I have poly mailers and padded flat rates for days. What I didn't have was a craft envelope to China. So there I was last Sunday at the Dollar Tree, even though I'm eating $8 in shipping, paying a dollar for a craft mm -hmm. envelope. So, you know, keep stocked up because it, it's never going to be a good time for you when you don't have the right shipping supply. And mine, I had the right shipping supply, or so I thought. Um, and we'll talk about this book next show that Debbie co-hosts. But what I want to share with you this time was I priced it because I thought it would fit in a padded flat rate mailer. As you can see, wah, 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 it don't fit. So I actually ended up eating a little bit shipping this week, too, because... Uh, it was a wider than normal book, and I and I I did not pay attention to that, so that was my bet. So make sure if you think you're going to send something padded flat rate that you uh, it'll fit. That's my big tip of the week because I blew it. All right, now it's time for our thrifty tip of the week: little tips and tricks to help you when you're out and about thrifting. Okay, so my thrifting tip is actually about before you get to the thrift store, um, especially for clothing sellers. Um, a lot of times you will find things that will sell for great money, but they have a small flaw. There's a hem out or there's a zipper that needs to be replaced. So spend a little bit of time calling around or checking the websites of your local dry cleaners. Find out what it costs for simple repairs. How much would you charge to rehem a skirt um, or replace a zipper or replace buttons on a man's shirt? That way, when you are out thrifting and you find something, you are able to gauge whether or not you can build in the cost of getting those little flaws fixed instead of leaving something behind that could potentially be a good sale just because you're unsure of what it would cost you to get it fixed. And I would add to that, if they are open when you leave the thrift store, take it directly to the dry cleaners 
because what happens to a lot of sellers is they take it home uh, and then me? it sits in a pile. <laughs> drive by that dry cleaner, you know, start by calling the dry cleaner closest to your favorite thrift store and drive right over there, drop it off. Uh, real quick, I want I didn't see this go by. Uh, Debbie just pointed out, and Debbie's always in the chat sending me the question. So, if you ever got a question, just throw it in the chat. Debbie's gonna take care of it and send it over to me. Uh, Jeannie McMahon said, I sold a German CD and went to China. So, a seller in the United States sold a German CD to someone in China. See, that is One. the beauty of what we do, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, we're back to CD stores, and the funny thing was, I took this picture the other day for my CD group. And I want to share it because thrifting isn't just at thrift stores. Now, this is a record store that sells new CDs. Hey, that's where I bought that Don Tiki for eight bucks. I sold for 40 and new CDs and they know what they're doing, but I know more. So I go spend 500 bucks like I did this past week in there and I'll turn that 500 bucks into like $2,000 or $2,200. But the funny thing was Stacy was photobombing and the little sign in front of her says, look what I found, rare, exciting out of print treasures. It's just so, so cute that she was right there. <clears throat> but don't ignore the record stores. And record stores have more than records, too, and re more than CDs. Uh, plenty of good sourcing opportunities there that have to be a thrift store. All right. Now it's time for... Our eBay Tip of the Week. Little tips and tricks to help you when you're listing online. Okay, so the new functionality where you can send offers to buyers. Um, the other night, I sent out a ton of offers, and um, which is great. It's been working great for me. But the next day was the day that I decided to switch back from GSP to international. And what I discovered in doing that is when you send those offers to buyers with that new functionality, they have 48 hours um, that the offer is good for during that time, your listing is locked in every way, shape or form. You cannot edit it whatsoever. Um, not the shipping, the pictures, the category, nothing. So if you're going to use that functionality, just make sure that your listings are the way that you want them. There's no mistakes or anything because you're locked into the way that it looks for those 48 hours. And that's a good tip. I never even thought about that part. So I'm glad you said that. I didn't know it. it. It didn't really seem to get spelled out anywhere. And I just figured it out by accident. All right. So I was teaching a webinar at the Secret Beach a couple of weeks ago. And I ran across this dress because I was teaching about rockabilly. If you know anything about rockabilly, this dress ain't, ain't rockabilly even in the slightest. Yet it came up when I searched rockabilly dress on eBay. And I was wondering, hmm, why did I do that? Or why did that happen? So I brought up the item specifics of this dress. And there's some of uh, the design features. They pick some that isn't really accurate to the dress. But what I what my tip is this week is you can add a lot of keywords to your item specifics that get used in eBay search, but please do not use inappropriate keywords. Okay. So, real quick, let me bring it back up. Let's look at that dress one more time. Okay. Everyone see that dress? Here are the inappropriate keywords they used. Audrey Hepburn, Baroque, Beyonce, Botanical, Christmas, Clubwear. That's none of these things. Harajuku, Chloe Kardashian, Kim Kardashian. Yeah. What'd you say? Can I just add something? You see where she says in, in the style two-piece dress and she says it with the number two and then the word two, but go back and look at the title. The title says it's a three-piece dress. Pick a oh, lane. Wow. I, didn't, I didn't know it's that. It ain't a ball gown. It ain't a shirt dress. It ain't rockabilly. So no. use these keywords to get more eyes on it. When is appropriate? Don't do this. This is ridiculous. And all that does is it angers buyers and then buyers leave because the whole point of the search is to find what you're looking for. There's a guy who does it in Vegas on Craigslist. He throws tiki into everything. So today he's selling a typewriter. And he's got the word tiki in there just so more eyes show up. I hate him. And the, and where they say material blend, um, don't be lazy. If it's a cotton blend, you know, put, put what the blend is at least. All right. Now we started a new segment last week called Jeans with Joy's Good Job of War of the Week. So if you're flipping denim, and you share it with us in the thrift board, you might end up on this segment. Oh, you know what? I don't have a, let's do this. There you go. I like that one. All right, tell us about the winner this week, Joy. Okay, so the winner this week is um, Maida Webster. 
and her husband who you see in the pictures there. So I, I don't know for sure, but I off the top of my head think it's been two years or so since she bought these. They are a vintage Wrangler seven and a half feet um, long pair of jeans that were an advertisement in a store. She paid $25. Um, she started her listing around 1600. She's been very patient. She ended up um, just recently selling them for 300. And, you know, first of all, kudos to her because I don't think that I would ever take on something that was seven and a half feet Eight tall. Feet of denim. <laughs> and I mean, that is just like, she went for it with this and she was patient. She did a research, you know, um, and I just think that when people are like brave enough to take on something that's that size, good for them. And at the end of the day, you know, that's a really good ROI on a $25 investment. Oh, no kidding. Plus it's a good story. That's made his husband, Bill. Hey, Bill. Yeah. That was his name. I'm sorry. I Sorry, Bill. I all right. Uh, all right. So a couple of quick uh, housekeeping announcements. And before we get, we got a big announcement coming up in about 32 seconds. And then we got Jacqueline on here. Uh, I started a new Facebook page called Jason's Tiki Adventures. What I've been doing is uh, shooting some quick two to four minute videos of Tiki mug unboxings. I watch all these kids do t toy unboxings and I'm like, what can we do for the adults? And I hang out in the Tiki world and I buy a, a lot of mugs. <laughs> uh, and what I thought it was going to be was just to kind of show off the mugs I bought. But I realized it was a lesson in shipping every single time, a lesson in breakable shipping the good and the bad. So as I open the box, I kind of describe the shipping and what's good and what's bad. And I buy directly from the artists. I, I buy from the manufacturers. I buy from companies. I buy from eBay. I buy from Facebook. And so I get, man, all kinds of shipping. And the funny thing was the guy who made this mug, I sent him the video before I published it. And he was commentating as the video was going on. <laughs> and he was worried at first. And then he was okay with it. So hop on over or right here on this YouTube channel is all the Tiki Mug unboxing videos. Or head on over to Jason's Tea Adventures on Facebook. Give me a like and you'll see all the videos there. Uh, this Sunday, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. West Coast, Mom and I are discussing two major things. People misuse the words retro, vintage, and MCM for mid-century modern all the time. So we're going to explain the difference between vintage, retro, and MCM and Mom's Ohio meetup and uh, Angela's Indiana meetup are having a co-meetup in Columbus and they're doing a scavenger hunt at a flea market. So we're going to hear all the stories. So we'll talk about the whole MCM vintage thing and then we'll hear about how the whole uh, scavenger hunt, bringing two meetup groups together uh, on Saturday went. So that should be fun. And those of you coming to eBay Open, it is sold out if you're not uh, already have a ticket, but I know there is a waiting list. We do have a lot of events surrounding eBay Open. The first one is the Ask Juice Party of the Double Down on Sunday. It's way tastier than it sounds. Uh, Monday, for those of you in the Seeker Beach, we have the Seeker Beach Bash where we take over a bar, have a full pig luau, also have vegetarian options, uh, have a band and have a blast. Then Tuesday night for everyone is the Tiki Party at Frankie's. Wear your best Moomoo or Hawaiian shirts. And Friday is the big thrift class on steroids where I bring together like eight, nine, or 10 instructors and you get some classroom time in the thrift store. You get thrift store time with all the instructors around the thrift store. And you get uh, some bins time, and it's called the Las Vegas uh, Las Vegas class on steroids, and this will be part three. Oops, that's that's coming up. Uh, if you're not on the thrifting board, come join us. We're about to add our fifty five thousandth thousandth <laughs> uh, member of the thrifting board. We're at we're at forty nine forty fifty four thousand nine sixteen. We're not even three years old yet, so it's a great group, free group, all the thrifting help you could ever want. So come on over. Maybe you'll be 55,000. And now, oh, uh, hang on. I think I got a, I think I got a drum roll somewhere. I, I should have been prepped. Is that a drum roll? Nope. How about a Vuvuzela? Oh, here we go. This will work. All right, so now for our big announcement. Boom! Jeans with Joy is doing her first free web class. Yay! I Tell am, us about it, Joy. I am so excited about this. I, it's been a very hard secret to keep. And, you know, while well, I've been trying to get it all ready, but 
this coming Monday, May 13th at the same time, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 9 p.m. on the East Coast, I'm having a free web class. Um, we are going to talk about how to sell used denim and turn that into a five or six figure income stream. We are going to talk about how to leverage um, my quick start soft sauce method um, that teaches you how to make the right purchases before you leave the store. We're going to talk about how to use Instagram to attract buyers. Um, we're going to talk about how to deal with sales slumps um, and sales plateaus uh, by getting into selling denim. And everybody who um, tunes in live for the webinar, which you need to pre-register for on my website, jeanswithjoy.com, everybody is going to get my labels list, which is my quick start guide to selling denim for free. And I am going to give away some great prizes. I'm going to give away a ticket to um, the thrifting class on steroids that Jason just talked about in Las Vegas following eBay Open where I will be teaching my denim class live in the thrift store. Um, you will also have a chance to win one of two eBay gift cards. And then there is going to be one grand prize winner that is going to win a super secret prize package, which is worth over $340. And it will help you literally crush your goals this year. And I'm just going to be, you know, talking about selling used denim because there's big money in it and it's absolutely free um, web class, but you do have to pre-register on my website at jeanswithjoy.com prior to the start, which is this coming Monday at um, nine o'clock Eastern, six o'clock Pacific. So I put the link in the chat twice. And then those of you who are watching after the fact, if you're not watching live and you're watching something this weekend, hello. Love you too. Uh, give us a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, subscribe, click the bell. And then right now, right down here, I got the link to Jeans with Joy to sign up. So get signed up. And if you're coming to Vegas, uh, I'm going to get the sign ups up for the uh, thrift class on steroids on Tuesday. So if you don't win it on Monday, those of you want to attend the class, y'all y'all keep messaging me. It's coming up on Tuesday. Uh, but someone's going to win a free one. It's a $150 value because you get eight instructors. What other class brings you? And it might be nine. I'm, I'm working all out. But right now, we got me. We got Joy. We got Debbie. We got my mom. I think you might see a bad dog, good dog presentation. Yeah, I don't know. I'm working on that right now. So uh, we're going to have a great staff of, uh, of instructors. And uh, jeans with joy. You know, I love joy because um, uh, jeans are everywhere and CDs are everywhere. So when we talk about this kind of stuff, it's a good compliment. Yeah. You know, because I talk about jeans, it's, it's not really everywhere, but jeans are everywhere. CDs are everywhere. They're everywhere. 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 And I just want to say again, to be eligible to win those prizes that I talked about, you have to um, watch the webinar live. So clear your calendar, you know. Pull your uh, Canadian tuxedo out of the back of the closet, put it on, be ready to go when the webinar starts. And if you don't know what a Canadian tuxedo is, that's your homework and, and look it up before the webinar. Yeah, I tend to rock a Canadian tuxedo when I was colder. My friends all give me shit for it, but I don't care about country boy. <laughs> yeah. All right, Canadian so let's get, uh, and I, and even though it's too late, Joy, I finally found it. I know it's kind of sucky to have the drum roll after the announcement, but I forgot to look for it. I couldn't figure it out. It was a big announcement, so, you know, it's not terrible to have All right, but speaking of denim, and the reason we have our guest on tonight, let's bring her in here. Hey, everybody, Jacqueline's back. Hey, Jacqueline, what's happening? Hi. <laughs> so Jacqueline's really good at denim, and we'll get to that in a minute, and that's kind of why we wanted to have her on tonight, because what, what, what impresses us about Jacqueline is she really gets into when when she takes a webinar, watches a show, she gets into it and she applies it. And I can't tell you, that is the biggest mistake. So many people uh, in the thrifty board that watch my show, they enjoy the information, but you got to go apply it. Even with my mom, we, mm -hmm. we did two shows. I'm putting a video in your listing and she wouldn't do it. But once she did it three times in a row, guess what? She got it. So if you go apply what you learn right away, even if even if it's a fail, like say Joy teaches you some great genes and you don't find that day, but the fact you went out and looked and you kept saying, okay, look for this, look for this, look for this. But then the second you find one, you cement it. Well, guess what? Jacqueline does that. She really puts it in there. Let's back up a little bit. So uh, tell us, you know, give us your 60-second bio, where you're from. Do you have any kids? Do you have a spouse? Do you have pets? 
Uh, are you wanted? Are you on the run from the FBI? Tell us anything good. <laughs> well, I'm originally from the Bay Area, California, but I live in Oregon, about 40 minutes north of Portland. And I have two kids. Um, I, yeah, I got married and then we had kids right away. And I knew that I always wanted to be a stay at home mom um, when, I, when we had kids. And so about a year ago, I kind of felt like I was ready to start going back into the workforce somehow, but I still had my kids that were really young and I needed to do something where I can stay home with them. So I just kind of prayed about it and thought, okay, I, I think I'm supposed to get into this reselling thing because I love thrift shopping, um, but I've never like resold anything. So I started going on to Instagram and just randomly looked at hashtags like eBay or <laughs> reselling. And I found a ton of information about, you know, just being a reseller. And then I reached out to a friend who worked for eBay and I was like, hey, can you really make money on eBay because I'm thinking about getting into it? And he was like, oh yeah, you definitely can. And so he kind of referred me to some resellers and I just kind of went down the rabbit hole looking at all these resellers and resources out there. And then I um, had a really good friend that kind of mentored me into how to have a resale business. And she helped me kind of get my Instagram store started, which is selling children's vintage clothes. And then shortly after that, I opened an eBay store, found the drip board, um, I joined the Secret Beach, went to the class, and yeah, I, the Secret Beach is where I learned a lot of stuff. All right, so I know a lot of you are saying she is a little hard to hear. I did turn Joy and I down, so I recommend us turn your speakers up, because let me tell you, uh, yesterday when we did it, we I went to a, a test run with the guest. Yesterday, she sounded as if, if she was RoboCop in a three-foot three mile deep tunnel talking through a tin can. And so this is, this is a thousand times better. And so, yeah, I know she's a little quiet. Uh, so also Declan, if you could uh, push out a little bit more too, but uh, yeah, turn it up and I will uh, turn me down even more. Cause I know I'm a little boomy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I've got me down. I got joy down and I do have Jacqueline all the way up, but trust me, you would have heard Jacqueline yesterday. This is amazing. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I, I, I should have forewarned everybody to turn up a little bit. Uh, but it, 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 yeah, I am very boomy. And if you can't hear well, uh, I'm sorry, but we're, you know, sometimes technology is not our friend. Uh, so Jacqueline, um, uh, let, let's talk about something fun first before we get into a little eBay. Uh, the, the reason I drank Travelers tonight. Oh, you lived in Africa in India? Mm -hmm. yeah. What, what uh, was all that about? Um, well, the Africa one was um, just volunteer work, and I mean, they were both volunteer work, but the Africa one, I um, lived in a really rural town outside of Kenya, and we lived at this elementary school. There was no electricity. We had to walk a really far away to get water out of a well, <laughs> and I got to go on safari, which was awesome and then india i have been there four times um but the last time i was there i got to live there for a few months like four or six months and i worked in an orphanage and just kind of was there so joy when's the last time you were in india and africa um i'm gonna go with never but i what i <laughs> love about that is is that you know I love that you have built this life. I'm going to build a life in Africa and then I'm going to build in India. Now I'm back in the U S and when you said there was no electricity and now you're making money selling online, yeah. it, like to me, that's just, I love it. I love, I love everything about you. I just, I think that you're fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I'm not a parent, but please tell me how do you get work done with those two little ones? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, but I just have to be adaptable. I mean, I think living overseas has helped me to just kind of go with the flow and, all right, I just have to adapt, you know, I'll be wanting to list something and then all of a sudden I'll have to attend to my kids because they're fighting for a toy or I have to change mm -hmm. diaper or something. So I get interrupted constantly, but I just kind of have to go with the flow with it and be okay with getting interrupted. And um, when my husband is home, he's really supportive and he watches them while I do some listing. And I try to break it up as much as I can. Like I'll say, okay, today I'm going to do these photos. And then when they go to bed at night, I'll measure everything. I'll list at night. I do things during their nap time. Um, I used to source with them, but that's not <laughs> 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 hard to do. <laughs> so 
so now I, I do a lot of sourcing online actually, which is nice because I'm home. So I can just kind of, when there's a moment for real, just go on my phone real quick and look things up. Um, but yeah, I just kind of have to go with the flow, whatever my kid's schedule is. And um, my mother-in-law will watch them sometimes. She'll say, hey, can I come hang out with kids? And I'm like, yeah, so she'll take them for a few hours and I'll just list as much as I can. Now, even though I don't have kids, I do know what's coming up for you, though, based on my other friends who have kids. As they get just a smidge older, when they're riding in the cart, you play the game. Okay, all the uh, blue tags are on sale today. Find mommy blue tags, and I'll buy you a toy. I know how to I, – I see my friends do it. Oh, and yeah. so they get that added bonus of a person at eye level of the tags as you're pushing them in the cart. Yeah. Well, my daughter actually helped me find a vintage gremlin stuffed animal because she pulled it out and was actually really scared of it. <laughs> She's like, what is this? And I mean, I was like, oh, thank you. So she is actually good at drift work. She finds all the weird, the weird stuff. So ah, and free I, child labor. <laughs> I just want to go back to something that you said real quick because I don't want us to gloss over it. Where you just said, I do a lot of my sourcing online. Yeah. I mean, to me, like, and I know what some of your successes that we'll talk about are, but to me, to, to the fact that you've only been selling since 2018 and you've taken in all of this knowledge about the platform and what to buy and you are doing it online where you're not able to touch and feel and inspect and and you're just really going on gut and and knowledge to me is amazing like i'm just in awe of that i think it's fantastic thank you I'm not that good. I don't buy stuff online for flipping. Every once in a while, I'll buy something online for flipping. But, you know, that's something that I just, I people who do it and do it well the way that you do, I just am so impressed by that. Oh, thanks. And funny enough, uh, I'm going to tell, after we get off the air, I'm going to tell Joy and uh, Jacqueline a story about flipping something online. But I ain't telling everybody yet because there's one more piece to this story. But it will absolutely blow your mind. So just a little teaser for a down-the-road story. Same thing. I bought something to flip, and when I started to work on today, that's all I'm going to say. All right. So, uh, how much do you buy online every week, Jacqueline? Are you is there are you buying two, three, five, a dozen things every week uh, to flip? Uh, it depends. I mean, last week I went to a really awesome estate sale, so I bought a lot of things there. Um, but I, I don't know. I I don't. I'd say online sourcing is is more. It's a less amount because I have to pay for shipping and I have to be really picky about that, you know, because you're paying for shipping as well. So online, I do actually buy, I don't know, five to 10 items a week that I find online. And then, um, I mean, I don't get the source as often as they want to, like out of the store. So it's just kind of all over the place, honestly. Don't you wish, like a lot of us, that the thrift stores were open 24 hours like Walmart? Where you can go at night. And <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2 a.m. thrifting. All right. So, uh, Deb in the chat wants to know what online sites are you using. So, are you you're selling on eBay? Obviously, what are you? What other sites are you also selling on? Um, well, I sell on Instagram. I don't do sourcing on Instagram, but I have a children's vintage shop on Instagram. Um, but I source from Facebook Marketplace, on OfferUp, um, other selling platforms. Um, like Mercari, Poshmark, I don't, I'm, I guess I could say <laughs> And I'm actually- Can you source online at Goodwill? From the Goodwill, um, from their auction listings? Can you source online from there? I haven't yet, actually. No, that's a good idea, though. Yeah, no, not that, but, um, and actually sometimes I'll even, because I kind of research things on eBay with the trends of, like, children's vintage clothes, sometimes I'll um, source something on there if they don't have international shipping, because- Honestly, most majority of my children's vintage clothes buyers are international. I mean, in denim too. So if I see that they have something priced really low and they don't offer international, I'll go ahead and grab that too. Just because I feel like it needs to get into the hands of the collectors that are abroad, you know? I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, that is just like, you have just taken everything that we teach and just like rolled it all into, you know, if you're a new seller and you think, do these people know what they're talking about? I mean, she has taken, we've said this, 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 and this, and you have put it all together and you are, I just slay in it. Thank you. <laughs> well, you've helped me so much. You really have. And the secret beach, I mean, it's just, it's yeah, really opened my eyes up to so many things out there. So 
And, and, and that's kind of why I love to teach it is because I, I, I know a lot of stuff and some of it, most people don't. And when I teach a webinar that people are not all familiar with, I, I can feel the light bulbs going off, even though I can't see the people when we're doing webinars. And, and I love it even more when I'm doing a class in person and I see those light bulbs go off. So I love trying to think of, okay, what weird thing do I know that I can, you know, uh, expound on and really teach people and they're like oh man i don't know anything about that so yeah it's 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 fun uh teaching people and it's fun having people like you because you're like yes give it to me i want to learn it. I wanna, yeah i want to yeah. absorb it and make money on it yeah yeah <laughs> so what's what's been the uh besides kids so let's leave the kids out for a quick sec what's been the biggest like hurdle as you're kind of building your ebay business so minus the kids going i want that toy yeah <laughs> Um, I think, yeah, just finding time, but I have to just be creative with my time and um, any opportunity I get, I just have to use that time to edit a photo or, you know, whatever is on my mental to-do list for eBay. I just, I'm always going back to it throughout the whole day. Um, so finding time is challenging and um, I think that's, yeah, that's probably just balancing the kids and finding time really. Oh. This is kind of fun when you're like, okay, I'm making, I'm cutting up hot dogs and making macaroni and cheese, and you hear that, and you're like, wait, I just made money. Yeah. Like, isn't that kind of great to be able to have those, like mom, you know, moments and still be bringing money in to the family? Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice to have that little like cooking and like, oh, I just sold something, yay! And I mean, and it's mm -hmm. nice to go. I can, you know, you're saying the drift stores don't open at, you know, at nighttime, but. Um, I found those jeans um, when everyone was sleeping, so I can still kind of do my like thrift shopping at nighttime in silence where no one's. Like... And I know, you know, I keep brushing all over the secret beach, you know, about those jeans because that was you bought them for fifteen dollars because there's a that there's a lot of people who are like fifteen dollars. I'm not spending fifteen dollars for something to slip, and they get all tied up in the fact that they were fifteen dollars. But those jeans were an easy hundred and sixty-five dollars sale. You know, and there was only two pictures, and what it was the title? Jeans. It was just jeans. Yeah. yeah. And they didn't say just, like, just, just, just one word. Just jeans. Oops. That was it. Jeans. And they were a hundred and sixty dollar pair of of Levi's. Levi's. Yeah. He didn't. It didn't even say Levi's five hundred one. It said it didn't even say the tag size. It just said about a size three woman's two pictures. So. <laughs> yeah. So I was just super impressed when I saw that because it, to me, you took what you learned in Jason's, you know, the Secret Beach group and, and from the denim webinars and you were like, I got this and I'm sitting in my living room, my kids are sleeping and I'm going to spend 15 bucks and it's going to, you know, turn into over $100 in profit for me. Yeah. Love it. Uh, so... Uh does your husband uh, get involved in all? Does he go thrifting with you? Does he help you ship? I wish is, it a, is it a full family operation or? Uh... Well, he works. He just switched careers, so he's working so many hours now. But I really think he has an eye for things. Like, I I really wish he would do it more because he does pick up things for himself. And I'm like, man, you got a really good deal. Um, but he is really supportive, and he um, will help me box things up if I get kind of stuck on something because. I do a lot of clothes, but sometimes they do hard goods. So him and my mother-in-law will actually help me with that. Um, but the biggest help is that he will take our kids, you know, if I have to like, especially if it's something big like blankets and they just cannot be around for that, he'll take them and play with them outside or, you know, just give me time to myself. And he knows on the weekends I like to go um, garage sale popping on the side every morning. So he'll wake up with them and take them while I go do my thing. It's really nice. And, Actually, when I started reselling at eBay, I told him, hey, I think I want to try this thing, um, eBay business. You know, what do you think? And he was really supportive. And he actually gave me, he's like, all right, I'll give you 150 cash to invest in your new business. And I took it and kind of wasted a lot of money on cute things. But now I, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of oh, wasted a no, lot of money on cute things. That was not a good idea. So, but I learned a lot from that. And it was great that he was like, you know, here you go. And he, he's, yeah, he's really supportive, so. Did you ever do that, Joy? Waste a lot of money on a few things. Um, yes, yes, I have. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if I call my tiki monks cute, but I get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I, time? Yeah. Uh, so, what time do you go garage sale on Saturdays? How early do you get up and get out? Um, well, a lot of sales here actually don't open until nine, so I wow. 
I know it's kind of weird. And some of them don't open till Saturday. Like the last one I went to was only Saturday, Sunday, but I try to get there first thing. So, you know, just get up with the kids and we kind of have breakfast real quick and he takes them and then I'll just, yeah, be gone for, I don't know, a few sales. Because she doesn't live in the scorching desert like we do. They can open at 9 a.m. For us, it's like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. They're closed by 10, 11, 12 o'clock. Okay. Now it's a lot of rain here. It's cold. <laughs> yeah, you have a garage sale to your garage sale when it's 120. That's garage sale. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're standing in the garage. They got a fan blown, but all it's doing is blowing the hot air in the garage. It's even worse. <laughs> Turn that fan off. It ain't helping nobody. All right, let's uh, let's look at some of your your scores and duds, and uh, I think I'll go backwards this time. Let's look at your duds because the one thing I, I am shocked is a dud. Actually, I'm a little shocked this is a dud, and the joy will probably be sad. <laughs> no uh -oh. one wants these Levi's pillows. Uh, the thing is, is that <laughs> the button, the pocket on the inside, those little um, <laughs> rivets, the little the little buttons on the inside are not Levi's. They're St. John's Bay, so I think that probably decreases the value. And they're not vintage. They're just kind of, I think they were just like a handcrafted project that someone was like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, turn this in. If they were vintage, it probably would do well. If it didn't have that extra pocket, it probably would be okay. But I mean, I paid a dollar for it. Just I saw the denim and the Levi's tab and grabbed it. <laughs> and then went home and was like, oh, it's probably, I didn't see any listings. And I found that pocket and was like, eh, it's not worth anything. How long were they listed? They're only, it's not even been a month, I don't think. So we'll see, but there is Put the word upcycled in your title. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I thought I, when, I, when I was putting the show together, I'm like, those are cool. Like, who wouldn't want that if you're into jeans and Levi's specifically? Mm -hmm. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a market for this for sure. All right, so let's look at this dot so that we can look at the score that kind of matches with it. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of, a bread and butter, so I, I got really into Levi's. I mean, I like got really into the denim and Levi's. Um, another kind of bread and butter item for me is like children's vintage, specifically Oshkosh overalls. Um, but this one I picked up, I think I paid up at the thrift store $5.99 because I just was like, oh, you know, I, I flipped these for... Um, for a lot so i was like these are so cute they kind of have a boho vibe but um yeah no one wants them. <laughs> they're they're modern and i think i i saw i looked at the sold later which i shouldn't have done i should have looked it up in the store but i was with my kids so i was distracted and i uh, I there's nothing really special about them really so um i would switch where you have short alls and overalls in the title because I, even though they are short alls i don't think that a lot of people know that word so i would switch it to denim overalls and put short alls at the end Okay. Yeah. Flip the way that you have it. Yeah. Okay. Someone wanted to see your seller ID, so it's home to me, home to you. There you go. Ask and ye shall receive. All right. So that's a dud. But let's talk about this. The exact opposite. <laughs> oh, and it's <laughs> almost the same product. However. Yeah. These floral um, vintage Oshkosh overalls. I mean, people. They love them. They they collect these Oshkosh. Um, and I actually got this one online on another selling platform. I paid with shipping. It was about ten dollars, and um, I just knew, yeah. Given, yeah, this how it has the, the look. It has that like bubble romper look. It has floral. It's made in the USA. That was a really good score. I actually kept it for myself for a while, thinking, oh, I want to put my next little baby in this, but. I was like, no, no, give it up. We're not, I don't think we're having any more kids. So there it is. Love it. So we go from $12 ones that aren't selling to 152 with 16 bids. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay, this dress is absolutely gorgeous. <gasps> I, mean, that is maybe I don't know, I'm not sure, but. <laughs> so that Where'd one, you... I... sorry, go ahead. Yeah, say um, so this one I learned also from the Secret Beach all about, you know, kind of um, Hawaiian aloha dresses and shirts. And that's how I knew that this material is bark cloth. I knew um, kind of keywords to put in it. I knew the style. It was at a vendor mall, um, a local vendor mall. And I grabbed it and didn't have a price tag, but the vendor was there and she was having a sale. And I was like, how much is this? And she's like, 
uh, 15. And I said, oh, is that with the discount? And she's like, oh, I'll just give it to you for 10. And I said, okay. And I brought it home, it listed it, and it sold um, overnight. Like literally overnight, I listed it, and then it, I woke up to it had been sold. So. That is gorgeous. Yeah. That, that, that's the kind of thing when I saw a dress like this, I don't know a way to do this without sounding creepy. I always want to say, can I see a picture of you in it? Because it's such a cool yeah. piece. I always would, I'm always curious about what the end user looks like in it. But boy, if you see a picture of me and I'm asking to see you a picture of you, yeah, that's way creepy. Yeah. But I always want to see because it's so cool. You know, it's all about getting, especially this old stuff, getting it to the right person, the person that should have it. So mm -hmm. I'm sure she's rocking this at some Tiki event that I'm probably going to be at. Yeah. Gorgeous. Ooh, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. I know of that song. <laughs> <laughs> so these blankets, I actually, it's the second Winnie the Pooh blanket I've sold. The first one was kind of like a quilted comforter type blanket. Um, and I knew, I found out about these blankets because I was sourcing online and came across a Winnie the Pooh blanket and something in me was like, oh, I think those might be worth something. So I looked it up on eBay and they definitely are. So I bought the, another one online. And then um, this one I bought on the thrift store though for $5. And I actually priced it high thinking they would offer me. I would have taken 30, I would have taken less, but they just bought it full price plus shipping. So I don't know why it's just expedited. Yeah, they they pay full price and make an offer. Nice. And uh, Angela had a great uh, tip in the chat. Hi, Angela. Uh, she says, I added a note in the package with my Instagram ID and asked them to tag me if they were at someplace fun. I love that idea. I'm going to do that. Yeah, great I don't idea. So, oh, I don't that's so creepy good. that way. Well, I mean, Very good. On Instagram, it's fun because these moms will buy children's vintage clothes for me and they'll send me photos and they'll tag me in it. And it's so cute seeing these. Yeah, it's cute. All right. So let's uh, let's end on uh, jeans, $215. What? Oh yeah, that yeah, I put the price back up. So these ones are the ones I found online. Um and all there was was a picture. So I didn't even yeah, it just said jeans. I just went into the category of Levi's and I sat there just kind of scrolling through. And the picture was really dark and it was actually just a photo of the top of the waistband. And then the second photo was the back pocket and the patch, but it wasn't even close up. It was just like kind of, you know, but because of joy, I knew I saw the bar tax and I was like, oh, there's bar tax on it. And then I um, kind of zoomed in on the patch and I quickly looked it up on eBay, but I was like, I don't want someone to take these before me. So I, I just kind of went with my gun on it and bought them and then researched them more afterwards. And yeah, brought presented it to Joy and she helped me with um, the pricing. So, yeah. And, I, I, and you said it, I missed it. How long were they listed before they sold? Well, so actually, this yeah, so these were listed uh, less than a month before they sold. And then actually, I sold it, but then they returned it because, I mean, it happens. I, I measured the leg opening incorrectly, which is a bummer. But, I mean, I understand, you know, people want jeans that fit them. So we returned them. But I'm hoping, I relisted them at a higher price, and I'm hoping that I'll, I'll sell to someone for higher price. I mean, they sold really quickly at the, at the previous... 165, right? Yeah, they made it. You told me to not yeah. take less than one. You said 165 range, and they offered 165, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I'll take it. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll sell again, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't look like you're offering best offer, and I and so if you're not, click that listing, turn that back on, because really, like I said, this is a 160 to to 215 pair of jeans. So if you're not offering best offer, you might want to turn that back on. So this is the previous listing. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the, the previous one. So I, I relisted it and it's um, listed higher and best offers on there. So cool. They so, will resell for more price. And so that sets up perfectly to kind of end on I, I, uh, I took a nap today, like I do every day with my wife and my doggy. And I woke up to three things, two sales that were fun and a return. And the buyer's reason for the return is a pair of jeans. Shocker. It's crazy how all this happened in this week. And the return said the jeans don't fit, thought it was relaxed fit. Okay, you ready for the title? Just listen to the third and fourth word. Are you ready? Echo Unlimited, slim, straight. And you thought it was relaxed? What about the third and fourth word, slim and straight, made you think it was going to be relaxed? And so here, what did you say, Joy? I was just going to say this is why I, you know, for a long time now, I 
been paying, I have buyers have been paying shipping and they do with clothes is, you know, I'm happy to take the return, but for any reason, like I'll take the return, but you know, clothes are what they are and in, they're not always going to fit. <clears throat> You're not always going to see every detail like that. Um, so I do charge for shipping on clothing because that's a buyer's remorse return and I'm not out the original shipping. So yeah, so, okay so crazy that happened like an hour before we go live that I got this weird, I thought they'd be relaxed. Slim straight. There ain't nothing relaxed about slim straight. And slim is a word that will never be on any clothes I ever own. Just a little side fact. <laughs> All right, Jacqueline. So what's next? What's, uh, what's big on the horizon for you? You got a good flea market coming up. You got a good, uh, did you get did you buy something cool on eBay last night to flip? What's coming up? What's new? What's taking? <laughs> yeah, no, um, I'm going to the states all the world that I'm really excited about. Um, I really always do like reviews, honestly. I mean, because of yeah, so <laughs> I'll go straight to like looking for anything denim and full and vintage. So there's a really good one that I'm gonna go do tomorrow. Um, yeah, cool. And Joy, uh, you got anything coming up? Um, I have a little thing called um a free web class on monday um make big money with denim it is monday may 13th nine o'clock eastern six o'clock pacific it is free but you do have to pre-register on my website which is jeanswithjoy.com tune in live by hook or by crook because if you tune in live you'll be eligible to win um one of the prizes that i am giving away that's awesome see how smooth that was <laughs> all right so sunday uh so before monday sunday tune in to see me and mom hey so you can hear how cool the the combo ohio meetup and indiana meetup uh with the flea market scavenger hunt i saw the things y'all have to find if any of you are watching i'm so bummed i couldn't be there i was gonna try but it just didn't work into my schedule and so that'll be sunday and then joy will be monday and then i will be off uh 3d business will be off next thursday because i will be in palm springs giving a speech uh, a tiki speech so, uh, you know, I'm always going somewhere to give a speech on something. And then next weekend, Stacey and I are going to pretend we're young and we're going to go to EDC and we're going to rave. All right, Joy, I can't wait to tune in Monday. I, I love when I get to sit back and learn. I can't wait. I am super excited about this. Like, I am just, I'm bouncing out of my seat. Like, I can't wait. I, you know, I love to talk about denim and I love to talk to sellers about why they should selling denim so i'm really looking forward to it and i hope that you guys will all join me for it jacqueline thank you for coming on tonight uh it's so great to see uh sellers who, who put their what they learn into action and also it's great it's great to see moms who can figure out how to do it because it gives yeah. other moms the same kind of hope like okay if she can figure out how to do with these two little ones i can figure it out too and then you start grooming them like you've already done your your daughter's like oh, right, here here's something you should probably sell this mom yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Make sure to give us a thumbs up down below and uh, click on the subscribe button. And we'll see you Sunday. And then we'll see you Monday. Bye, everybody. Bye, Jacqueline. Bye.